Hi everybody, Nate here, and in today's video we're going to be talking all about how to deal with images in iMovie, how to import them, and how to customize them once you get them in iMovie. Now, if you're not very familiar with the basics of iMovie yet, I think that's a good place to start actually, and so I would definitely recommend watching my iMovie basics tutorial, which I'll put a link to right up at the top there. This one will get into more detail on images and talk about some of the advanced options you have with them. So here I am in iMovie and I'm in a project right now and that's what I'd recommend you start with here. Get into your video project. If you don't know where those are, uh, you might find them right here. You can double click on the one that you want. And now our goal is gonna be to get some images into this video here. And this one is just an old book review that I filmed for my job. So our media location is right up above here. This is where our media lives. So in this case, this video project, I have my little video intro. I have a video clip of me going through the book and I have a video of me talking at the beginning. You notice that I also have access here to any images that are in my photo library in Mac OS or some of my other previous videos that I've made here. So if I look in here, I can see these are other videos that I have made in iMovie and I can grab any media, images, video, or sound files from these and drag them into my current project if I want to. But I'm gonna go back up to my project media here. And what I wanna do is I wanna get some images from my computer into here. All right, there's a couple ways you can do this. One way would be to click the import button here and you can browse for those images and other media. I can look in my desktop, I can look in my Dropbox, anywhere on my computer, I can just navigate in this window here and then choose my media and import. In this case, however, I'm gonna use the drag and drop method because it's my preferred method. It's just really easy. So I opened up my finder, and in this case, I've got a few images in my downloads folder. So if I want to, I could take an image here and I could drag it right directly onto my timeline. Or if I'm not quite sure where I want it yet, let's go back to my finder here. I could just put them up in, I'm holding shift and clicking on two so that I can get both of them selected at once and I'm gonna drag them up into my media area here so that I can decide later where I want them in my video project. So I've got some nice scenic pictures of Ireland here. From here, I have the option to put these on top of my video as kind of an overlay or a cut away. So you can see as I'm playing here, it goes from here to my image and then back to the book. Or I can actually put it down here as replacing some video and kind of bumping out some video. And in this case, it's not gonna have any audio, so I might wanna record some voice over there, and that's a topic for a different video. So again, I can drag it onto my existing video, or I can drag it onto the main timeline, kind of replacing video. So in this case, I'm actually just gonna drag this picture of Ireland right here, this is scenic Irish castle. Now the default is to make it four seconds on our timeline here, but if you would like to make it last longer, you can absolutely click until you get the edge and we can drag it out to like 12 seconds or whatever we want here. In this case, let's say I want it over this whole clip here. I want to have a picture of Ireland. All right. Now let's talk about the different overlay settings. So this is true of video or images. And in this case, we can choose by clicking on this right here if we want it to cut away. So if we choose cut away, it will not show my existing video on my timeline down here at all. It will only show what is overlaying it. If we had it shorter here, you can see that it would actually just cut away from my face. And there's our picture of Ireland and my video is starting, but we're not seeing my face, we're just seeing the image. Another overlay option is green or blue screen. And I'm not gonna talk about that in this one. That's really a whole nother topic, but I do have a video on that one too. So I'll put a link to it right up at the top. Split screen is a nice option here. And when I click that, you can see that it does my image on half and me on the other half. So that's kind of nice. You can also change the position if you would like to, left, right, top, or bottom. You can also choose to have a little slide animation so that it would kind of animate the other image coming onto the screen. Lastly here, we have picture in picture, which is one that I use a lot. And so you can see that this just makes our little Ireland image kind of small, and I can easily put it into the corner here. And so let's say that I wanna do that for this whole video clip here. I can drag out the edge here, and then you can see 
that as I'm talking, that image of Ireland is in the upper left-hand side of the screen. And you can use that to kind of show something that you're talking about, explain a diagram, or whatever you want to do. Now, in this case, let's actually go back to cutaway and let's decide our crop option. So the crop option is this little squarish button here. Crop option is most significant when you are in cutaway mode or when you have an image in here and maybe you're adding some narration, doing sort of a digital story or something like that, and you're just having a lot of images with you talking. So the default is probably for you going to be the Ken Burns effect, which if I click on the crop options here, you can see Ken Burns is selected here. Now I turned that off on mine and I made the default fit, but I believe the default in iMovie is to have the Ken Burns. And what you'll notice that that does is it is slowly zooming in on the image. Okay, so that is the Ken Burns effect. So you can absolutely adjust that as well. So if I click on Ken Burns here, you can see where it's starting and ending and I can just toggle back and forth between those, start and end. Let's say I do want it to zoom in, and I want it to zoom in right here, starting there, and now we can get a closer look at what that does for us. So that can be kind of a nice effect, and you can also choose if you want to, to start in and then zoom out. There's a lot of customization there, or you can use it just to pan across a photo as well. Let's say I don't really want it to get bigger or smaller. I just want it to pan across and you can see that's what that does here. So Ken Burns effect can be kind of a nice thing when used with intent. When I have students who are using it, sometimes I find they're not very thoughtful about where it's panning to. And you want to do that in a way that really serves the story you're trying to tell with your video. Another option would be fit. And this just fits the whole image here. So let's take the case of this photo right here, for example, where this will be more pronounced. If I put this image on my timeline, you can now see that in fit, it's just gonna stay there. And I'm gonna have a lot of blank space around the edges. And sometimes that's nice, and sometimes you wanna show the whole image, and that's the best way to go. But let's say I want that to actually fill the screen. Now for this, you're gonna wanna make sure you have some pretty high resolution images, because we're gonna be zooming in a lot, more than the photographer may have intended. So if I click crop to fill here, you can see, I can choose where I want it to crop. Do I want it on these stones? Do I want it on the top of the mountain? Do I want it somewhere in the middle? Let's say I want it somewhere in the middle here. And now we can see it's not moving at all. It's just staying right there. And these black spaces that you're seeing on the edge actually won't show up when I export this video. So when you're importing images, you'll have to decide, do you want fit, crop to fill, or Ken Burns effect? And also if it's on top of your video, you'll have to decide, do you want it to cut away? Do you want green blue screen, split screen, or picture in picture? Now there are a couple other things you can do with images here that I'll just make a note of. You can go ahead and change the balance. You can change the white balance. You can kind of mess with uh, the way the thing looks here. I'm gonna cancel that. You can go in here and you can adjust some of the other color and light settings as well. And you could even go in and apply some filters here by clicking on this button right here. All right, so if you want to look really interesting, we can select that blast option. And there you go. This little I button right here just gives us the file name and when it was imported, how long it lasts. And so really those are some of the more advanced features that you can play around with in images. One thing I'll also note here is there are some images that are already in iMovie that you could use. These are generally gonna be useful as backgrounds for text. So if you are having a title in between two segments of your video, these make great backgrounds. Some of them are animated as well, as you can see here. And there are also these maps up here, uh, which we should talk about in a different video. Those are kind of cool. All right, so this has been a tutorial about how to work with images in iMovie. Hopefully I have told you everything you need to know about this process, but if you feel I left anything out, please leave comments down below. And if you still have any questions, I welcome those as well. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and uh, you'll see me again very soon. Thanks.